All right, and we're live. So good morning, guys. Uh, this is English 079. And today we're going to be talking about what we're going to be doing this week. But first, let's talk about kind of what we finished up last week. So last week, I asked you to do the very first reading. So that is the, um, that is the subway paradigm shift. So I asked you to read that. And then I asked you to do the, um, the uh, reading guide for that and to hand it in. It looks like, man, it looks really good. I'm, I'm really impressed with um, how everybody's been able to hand everything in. Now, some of you guys did mention you had a little bit of consternation, a little bit of apprehension, if you will, about, hey, what am I supposed to put in these places? And I want you to understand that the goal here is to help you read the thing closer, a lot closer than you might normally read it. And I'm not, especially on, these, on this first essay, this, these first, uh, this, during this first essay, I'm not so concerned about, did you get the answer right or did you get the answer wrong? My main concern is, can I look at this and can I tell that what you're trying to do, you're trying to piece the thing together. Now, most people typically have the most problems. Let's see here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over, share my screen. Most people have the majority of troubles with, um, with the, uh, the guide in the part where it's, it's the, um, the outline, the, what would, sometimes people call it the reverse outline. Uh, so again, the reading guide file is in this folder. It's, it's always gonna be there. And um, let's see here, just click there. And so, and so the, the whole point of this is to help you kind of uh, read it, read the readings a little bit more closely. And to one nice thing about this is later on, whenever you're going to summarize it, right? Just like we, we talked about in comp one, we're going to, our assignment is to summarize this uh, reading. Well, the nice thing is you've already dissected it in your own words, because if you, if you take a look at this, uh, this outline, what I'd like you to try to do, and it's okay if you just copied and pasted things this first time, but as we go forward, what I'd like you to try to do is to put things in your own words. So for instance, if you're taking a look at the paradigm shift, uh, the uh, subway paradigm shift reading, and I'll just pull it up real quick in comp one, we have, it's a short, it's a really short narrative and every paragraph has a purpose. Okay, and you're gonna find that that is the goal of good writing is that there's a purpose for every paragraph. We don't have, you know, just fillers um, taking up space for no reason. Every, every single paragraph is gonna have a purpose. So if you take a look at this introduction part, we can tell that the introduction is that first sentence. And that's really just because when it comes to essays, that's always gonna be the first sentence, the first sentence, or the first paragraph, I should say. The first paragraph is the introduction for essays. And so if we're thinking about the introduction and notice how it, we on this on the sheet we have I and then introduction and thesis statement they're together okay and so what we have here is we know that the thesis statement is going to be somewhere in the introduction so what does he talk about in the introduction well he introduces the idea of a paradigm shift and maybe you've never heard of a paradigm shift. Maybe you have heard of a paradigm shift. But what he's trying to do is meet his audience at a place where it's possible that they have, it's possible that they haven't. Uh, he's using the term in a way, but you can tell just from the context of this paragraph what it means. And you say paradigm shifts. He says paradigm shifts move us from one way of seeing the world to another. Okay, so he pretty much defines what a paradigm shift is. So in the introduction portion, you could put in the introduction, the author defined a paradigm shift, and that would be fine because he basically, that's all he does, right? The next sentence he says, and those shifts create powerful change. Okay, great. And then the next sentence, this is just a three sentence introduction. Most of the time you're gonna want more than that, but this particular author only has three sentences. This pair, and so he says, our paradigms, correct or incorrect, are the sources of our attitudes and behaviors, and ultimately our relationships with others. Now, if you still didn't know what a paradigm was at this point, 
you should have looked it up, okay? So a paradigm is basically the way we look at the world, right? It's the way we see the world, the way we see the kind of the situations in the world. And we have this statement, okay? And this is just gonna be a lot like what you're gonna do in your first essay. But right now we're not even thinking about that. We're just thinking about this writing, uh, this, uh, this uh, reading guide. But his, his basic thesis statement or his claim, right? The thing that he says is true is that our paradigms, correct or incorrect, are the sources of our attitudes and behaviors and ultimately our relationships with others. Now, if you copy and paste that into the thesis statement portion of the reading guide, that's fine. Or if you put it into your own words, that's fine too. Just as long as you, at that point, you pretty much say this is approximately what his thesis was, what his truth claim, what his lesson was. Now, as I'm going through this, if you're thinking, oh no, Professor Coomer, I didn't do any of this right, don't worry, okay? I wanted to give you this assignment on the first week to challenge you to, to think for yourself and whatever you handed in, as long as it's complete, you're gonna get full credit, okay? What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to give you a little bit of guidance uh, after you've had some time to think about this assignment so that you can work on the second reading this week because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be working on reading two this week. Okay, so what the basic argument is, is the thesis statement, and that's what we talked about. Our paradigms, correct or incorrect, are the sources of our attitudes and behaviors and ultimately our relationships with others. Great, okay. Now the rest of the, uh, the rest of the essay is just a story. And so you have body A, body B, body C, body D. Well, guess what? There's paragraph A, paragraph B, paragraph C, paragraph D. Uh-oh, there's more than just the few that we have. Well, that's okay, because what we're trying to do is, is basically break it up into sections, okay? So the first section is kind of where he's setting you know, you could even say the first two paragraphs kind of set the tone. And you can say, you know, uh, the man was in a, a subway and some kids walked in and they were really loud, rambunctious, okay? That literally could just be your body paragraph A. Now you don't necessarily have to fill in the little A, B, C, and D, but if you wanted to, you could with the details from that section. So the kids were really rambunctious. The car was quiet and it was a Sunday, but then when the kids ran in, it became loud. Like you would just do your, your details in this section. So then you get to the section B. Okay, what's the next thing that happened? Well, the man sat down next to me. Okay, his uh, closed his eyes, apparently oblivious to the situation. The children were yelling back and forth, throwing things and grabbing people's papers. It was very disturbing, uh, yet he, he did nothing. So. What you could do is you could say, okay, um, the man didn't do anything about the kids that were running around. And you know that is pretty much what was discussed there. The next section is where he did something about it, right? So he got irritated and he said, hey, listen, your kids are running uh, amok and could you do something about them? Okay, so that's what you could put in this section. You could literally just basically just briefly state in your own words what happened in that paragraph. And then the man lifted his gaze, and this is where we find out the reality here, right? The man lifted his gaze as if to come to a consciousness of the situation for the first time and said softly, oh, you're right, I guess I should have done, I should do something about it. We just, just came from the hospital and their mother died an hour ago. I don't know what to think, and I guess they don't know what to think either. Now, this is whenever the reader is like, oh my God, you know? And this is when the, the writer, right, this author, this is part of the lesson, right? Because he thought the dad was being like a, I guess, a, a, a poor parent, but in reality, he found something out very profound, right? And this is whenever the lesson was learned. But basically, in the D section, all you would need to do is tell me what happened in that section. Okay, in this section, we find out that the reason why the kids are so rambunctious and the reason why the man is not doing anything about it is because 
um, the children's mother just died. And there's, uh, and then really that's about it. That's all you would have to say at that section. And then the last paragraph in any essay is going to be the conclusion. Okay, so we have a conclusion here. And so in the conclusion, he is basically, in a way, he is revisiting what he said in his introduction. Because that's pretty typical. You're going to find that in most essays that you're going to read in this class and most that you're going to write. There's something that connects the beginning of the story to the end of the story. So in the beginning of the story, he said what a paradigm shift was, right? And how certain things in our lives make us look at things differently. And then he tells us the story of a time when he saw it one way, and then he looked at it differently. Aha. Uh -huh. And then in the conclusion, he says, can you imagine how I felt in that moment? My paradigm shifted. Okay, so we finally, he didn't say paradigm the whole story long, but now he brings it up again. Okay. So in the conclusion, you can literally, if you wanted to say, that um, in this paragraph, the author writes about how his paradigm had, uh, had shifted and he started to see things in a completely different way. So essentially, you're describing what happens in each paragraph. And that's how you're going to basically reverse outline this essay. Now, let's think about why this is so awesome, how this is going to help us. Once you have reversed outlined, any of the readings we do this semester. And there's gonna be, this is the shortest reading that's gonna be, these two in the beginning, they're very short. They're gonna get longer. The whole point of doing this uh, in the first few weeks, the, the way we're doing it is so that you can get the hang of this. But, but basically, once you have all of the things, these are the main ideas. These are the main things that we bring up. The cool thing is, when I ask you to write a summary of this reading, all you need to do is look at, oh, cool, I've already, I've already pretty much summarized it with this reverse outline. I know what things I'm going to bring up in my summary. And even though I can't copy and paste maybe the words from this outline to a paper and then it's done, I know all the major things that I need to bring up. Okay, so that is why we're doing this. This, is, this part is so important, okay? And so that was what you did for today or for Friday, you finished your first one. And of course, these other questions, sometimes you're gonna know the answer perfectly. Other times you may not be sure, but it's okay. My goal here is to get you thinking about it so that later on, whenever we write about it, you've already thought about it, you've already put some ideas down on paper, and it's gonna be easier to write about it later. Okay, it's not busy work because what we're doing is we're, we're making progress for later times whenever we're going to either have to summarize or in many parts of the rest of the semester, we're going to have to not only summarize the reading, but we're going to have to respond to the reading intellectually. So that's what we're, that's kind of the purpose behind what we're doing when we're doing this. And of course, hey, you know what, three words that you believe are key to understanding the article? Well, I would assume some of you guys put down paradigm, right? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a major part of this uh, a part of this uh, essay. Um, and then of course, there's other ones that you might have picked out specifically. Um, and you know, you know, the page number is pretty easy. And then to define it, you know, you might have just had to look it up. So essentially, these are, uh, these are guides that we're going to do to every reading that we read. And there is a purpose behind them, we're going to be using them to, to, to produce better summaries of every reading. And the nice thing is, whenever I ask you, like in essay two and essay three, I'm going to ask you to respond intellectually to the reading. You'll already have everything mapped out and you'll know what you're going to be doing. Okay. So that is what we're doing with this. Now, you've already done the paradigm shift for today. And if for some reason you had ha trouble handing it in or something, make sure to hand it in today. But you did that for, I guess, Friday. So let's take a quick look right now at the syllabus to see what we're going to be doing this week. Okay, so the fall 2020 syllabus and schedule, we'll open that up. Oops, this is comp one. I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, and that can be, and I, I guarantee you, that's going to happen lots uh, of times to, to you, to me, this semester, both 
uh, both things are kind of going towards comp one. So, uh, and we're gonna go back and forth with both uh, Blackboard pages. So occasionally that's gonna happen. Okay, so, but let's take a look at the syllabus slash schedule for English 079. And we're scrolling down. Here we go. So we already finished week one. So we already looked at the syllabus. We looked at reading one. You did your, com okay, and here's the thing some people had some, some troubles with. We used to call them com uh, the critical reading activities um, because whenever we were in person, it was a lot harder whenever you were in person. You, just to let you know, you got it easier than we, what we had in person. But we called them uh, critical reading activities. So anytime you see critical reading activity, that is your uh, reading guide, okay? Just so you know that they mean the same thing. And then we thought about the campus engagement project. And I'm just gonna remind you about that again. Remember the first thing on uh, the schedule was August uh, 27th, and that's coming up. I'll remind you about that at the end of class again, um, but it is a good idea to try to get those knocked out. You only have to do two this semester. Try to get those knocked out as soon as you can. But, okay, so you've already finished week one. Awesome, congratulations. Week two, okay, read reading number two. Okay, so we've already read the paradigm shift one. Now we're gonna read the one about learning how to play chess. It's another very short one that you'll do the exact same thing you did last week. Critical reading activity number two. Okay, so you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to comp one, okay? So in the comp one, essay one folder, so comp one, homework and assignments, essay one project materials, learning to play chess narrative. We just talked about this in comp one. You're gonna read this narrative. It's very, very short. And you're gonna do the same thing to this that you did to the paradigm shift story last week. Only this week, maybe we'll even do better, right? We've talked about it a little bit more. You understand the process a little bit more. Great, you'll have this one to work on. So that's where you get the reading. And again, we're gonna go back to the English 079 to get the, uh, the file so that you can do the reading guide, okay? So the reading guide is in 079. So you go to 079, you go to content and assignments links, uh, and then you're going to go to the reading guide file folder and there it is you'll download it and after you read uh, the the reading you're going to complete another one of these for that reading okay awesome so the reason why we're doing this okay next week in this class we're going to go ahead and work on summarizing these readings okay we're gonna summarize both of them and we're gonna have a peer review on them. So you're gonna read somebody else's summary, someone else is gonna read yours, and you're gonna to try to help each other get a better summary. And what we're gonna do is before we hand anything into comp one with those summaries, we're gonna know in this class that we've gotten them completed and that someone else has looked at them for us so that at least it's not as bad as if no one else has looked at this. Someone else has tried to help us proofread, okay? So we're gonna work on those summaries in this class before we hand them in to comp one. So all you gotta do this week though is the reading and uh, in, in the reading guide and then look at what it says here, complete journal number one. Okay, so that's a new thing I'm going to introduce to you. Every week, if you notice, every single week we have a journal uh, thing to complete. Okay, so complete journal one, two, three, four, we have journals all throughout the semester, all the way up to journal 12. So every single week, you're gonna do a journal. And these are very simple. Um, you don't have to give me pages and pages, just maybe a, a paragraph and that'll be fine. But definitely don't give me less than a paragraph. As long as you give me about a paragraph and it's well thought out and you've really done your best, you'll get all the credit, okay? So all you need to do is go to the content and assignment links, you click there, and then, let's see, wait a minute. Actually, it's under reflective journals. It's, you click reflective journals on the left, and then these are all of your reflective journals. 
So by the end of this week, I'd like you to click on this and it, it asks you a question, okay? So how did your first two weeks go? Pretty simple stuff. And just, I, I give you some things to think about. And um, if you click on that, there's 10 points possible, read the prompt. And then all you need to do is click on where it says write submission. And it'll open up a box. You can just type your answer in there and you're good to go. If you want to type it up on a Word document, you can hand that in through Browse My Computer, but you don't have to. These are really more or less just straight up, you just write it in the text box and you'll be good to go. So those are the things that you need to do for this class. You're going to, again, you're going to read reading number two, and, the and you're gonna do the critical reading activity and you'll hand that critical reading activity in into week two under content and assignment links. You go down to week two. We got the reminders there for week two. You click on week two and right there, reading guide number two, you hand it in there just like you did last week. You're gonna hand that in there. Okay, having said that, before I review one more time, are there any questions for me? You can ask me privately or you can ask through the text chat here. I'll be happy to answer through video here if you have any questions. Okay, if you come up with a question, if you're like me, you know, as soon as the class is over, it's like, oh yeah, I should ask that one thing. I understand, uh, you can always email me and I'll be happy to help you as much as I can. Please remember when you email me, especially for, for, for us in this class, because you're in two of my classes, please specify which class you're asking me a question about. If you have a question about 079, that's this class, ask, make sure to tell me, I have a question about the 079 class. And that way it puts me in the right frame of reference so I can give you a good answer. Same thing if you're, if you're asking about 101, say I'm, I have a question about English 101. That way I know approximately uh, what, what to tell you, how to help you. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll give you a little reminder. At, now I'll just kind of review and then we'll get out of here. So again, you're gonna read the reading number two and you're gonna do the critical reading activity, which is the reading guide. Make sure to hand that in by midnight uh, on uh, Friday and that's into the week two folder in our 079 Blackboard page. You can also, I'd also like you to complete journal number two. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remind you about the, the um, campus engagement project. Again, you have to do two campus engagement uh, things in a semester. So click on where it says content and assignment links, and you can go to where it says campus engagement process, project assignment links. You click there, and again, your two links are there. All I'm asking you to do is to attend a, either a virtual, I don't know if there's gonna be any in-person events this semester, but if there are, you can go to one of those. Um, and But basically all you need to do is write a paragraph about what happened, so summarize the event, and then a paragraph about what you thought about the event or how it affected you or you know anything, any of your thoughts. Um, you'll hand those in up here. And then um, again, the August 27th date is coming up. It is a part-time virtual job fair. Um, all you need to do is go to the venue.edu uh, forward slash blazer career link and you can find out how to, uh, how to get into this um, part-time job fair. Uh, it, they do require registration, but since it's virtual, I don't think they're going to run out of any spots. So uh, try, to, try to get into that. I think that would be one of the easiest ways to get this assignment done. Also remember that going to tutoring counts as campus engagement. 
So if you want to do any tutoring over any uh, topic, any subject that you're in, that will count as well. And you can use that as your um, campus engagement uh, for, for these uh, assignments as well. So I just wanted to remind you about that. So guys, lastly, last but not least, again, these your reading, your, your journal, make sure to complete those by the end of this week. If you have any questions for me, please let me know. And unless I have any other questions in the chat box, guys, uh, I hope you have a great week. Remember, anything we talked about today, I will upload and I'll be sharing this recording with you. So if you have any questions over anything we ever talk about, you can always rewatch these videos. And if for some reason I say something that's kind of confusing or if I didn't talk about something, again, hey, email me and I'm happy to help. All right, guys, unless we have any other questions, any questions? Seems like we don't have any questions. All right, guys, thanks so much. Continue working hard, and I will see you next week for the next Zoom call. Bye-bye.